Hello, everyone. I'm Larry Ridley, and this is the NFL on EA Sports. Two running backs will take the field today in hopes of leading their team to victory. It's West Ravens going up against Latavius Murray's Vikings. With that, let's welcome in our fine broadcast team. Here are Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. EA Sports coverage takes us to one of the newest jewels on the NFL landscape, U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. The scene a short time ago, this crowd decked out in purple, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football, folks, as the Vikings get set to do battle with Joe Flacco and the Baltimore Ravens. Hi again, folks. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And as we all know, Charles, offenses today, they're driven by the passing attack. But Larry highlighted in the open a couple of running backs who might just disagree with that assessment. Yeah, and sometimes, occasionally, you get a game where running backs will match each other, kind of carry for carry on opposite teams. But for the most part, they focus on themselves. How many touches will they get? And can they create big plays for their own team? And both of these guys, certainly more than five, 10 touchbacks. They're workhorses. Justin Tucker set to boom this one away. And we are underway from downtown Minneapolis. This is taken about seven yards deep. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Minnesota Vikings take the field last week beating Green Bay. Of course, Aaron Rodgers got injured in that game, but 23 to 10. Case Keenum, the quarterback for Minnesota for the fourth straight week in place of the injured Sam Bradford. And he's played well. I don't think that by any stretch of the imagination can you not say that because when you look at his numbers, you look at how the team has responded to him and it just got done beating the Green Bay Packers, Case Keenum's going to be the starter for this team, I believe, for the foreseeable future because I'm not sure Sam Bradford's going to make it back from his knee injury. And while Teddy Bridgewater's coming off the PUP list as early as next week, I still see him going into lineup anytime soon. Now a play fake here on first down. And he's got the hook up here. It's Kyle Rudolph. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 12 yards there as they move the chains. So much goes into a successful play, doesn't it? How about that play action there? Freezing the defense just enough to bring the tight end free downfield for the completion. First down and 10 now for the offensive group. Now Keenum. They fights him off. Able to fight through one. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Terrell Suggs coming in from that outside linebacker spot to bury him for a loss of seven. All right, partner, count with me. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. Look, he had all day to throw the football and never got rid of it and allowed for the sack. That's not on the offensive line. Throw on second down is Keenum. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. And he'll get up near the 45. They'll spot it at the 44. So apparently some grabbing of the jersey there on the O-line. Yeah, just look in the interior, and that's where the penalty occurred. Second down, here's Keenum. Oh. 
Looking left side, and he's got a man. It's right. A big gain there after going backwards, and that'll lead to a third down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs, as we just saw there. Now third down, less than a yard. To throw, it's Keenum. And that is incomplete. You absolutely have to have this early on, right? Third and short, they elect to throw for it. And that's normal NFL football. They're going to throw on third and short, but you've got to hit it, don't you? Yeah, in the first quarter, like you said, to set the tone, can't connect there. Ryan Quigley, fifth-year man from Boston College, in to punt it away. Back deep for the Ravens, Michael Campanero. And out of bounds, sailed over, looked like right near the pylon. This one's going to be perfect. Directional kicking at its finest right down at the one-yard line. And now here come the Ravens. Great starting field position here for the offense. Now a carry here for Terrence West. And he will be hit with a lot of force and spun down. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. But both teams practice this situation. And this time, the guys on offense won, and in a very nice way. What a run from that position on their own goal line. Gave them some good breathing room. I wonder now, do you still stack the line of scrimmage, or do you play normal defense? They may have backed him off with that run. And he will take this up to about the eight-yard line. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. Third down, it's West, and he's going to be run over, hit hard, as he'll be marked down. It'll wind up being a loss of two, and that's going to bring up a fourth down. And Anthony Barr just has it all, as far as I'm concerned, in terms of physique, athletic ability, and now he's versatile as well. When he came out of UCLA, he played outside linebacker, but also down defensive end. The Vikings can utilize the same sort of skills. Here's Sam Cook now, as his first punt will come from inside his own end zone. Fair catch taken just inside the 40-yard line. So a change of possession here on the punt. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. The Vikings offense now heading out to take over. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. They go play action here on first down. And his throw here is incomplete. He was looking for his tight end there, Kyle Rudolph. That'll bring up second down. 
And the offensive starters for the Vikings. Minnesota had a very optimistic vision of what they would do on offense in 2016, but a couple of key injuries altered that landscape. Running back Adrian Peterson and quarterback Teddy Bridgewater. That led to them scrambling throughout the season to try and fit together their offense, try to put the running game and a new passing game together. And instead of having a big year, they finished 28th overall in total offense. Keenum again here on second and 10. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. Holding offense. So apparently some grabbing there in the middle of the O-line. I've often wondered why that doesn't happen more often for guys that play center. Having to snap the ball and then trying to get your hands into the proper position, that's difficult to do. He got caught that time. Second down and incomplete. And here are the Raven defensive starters. When talking about the Ravens defense, it's pretty easy to take them for granted, isn't it? They're traditionally a top 10 defense, but if you take a closer look at the numbers in 2016, that might surprise you about how good they were during the season. Fifth against the run, ninth against the pass, seventh overall. Once again, the Baltimore Ravens, one of the better defenses in the NFL. And some secondary help here for the defense in the nickel on third and long. Off play action, Keenum. And now another one thrown incomplete. An absolutely zero surprise that that one was incomplete, huh? I mean, was, truthfully, how many OCs have we seen with third and 20 on their play sheet and go, oh, I've got the exact play to dial up? Now, that's just a, a head scratching down <laughs> when you're facing a third and 20. Tried to complete it, couldn't get it done. Here's Ryan Quigley now. On for his second punt. He'd take a repeat of his first. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. And that one hits at the seven, but bounds into the end zone, and that'll be a touchback. Now the Baltimore offense heading back out onto the field. And the first drive, three and out. Second possession, see if they can get a little momentum. And oftentimes that first drive is just a feeling out process. You have some plays that you've got called, and you want to see how defense reacts. It may not go terrific on the first one. Now they're ready to go. They've kind of got a look at them, got a sense. Let's see if they open things up a little bit. Let's see if they open things up. Let's see what the defense does here, too, after a good stop. The drive begins with a handoff to West. And he will fight his way forward to about the 23-yard line. After the play on the ground, that brings up second down here. On the ground, it's West again. And a nice move will yield nothing as he stopped behind the line. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. And frankly, Brandon, we're talking about things I'm not sure we ever thought we'd talk about in the NFL, and a lot of that is the speed at the linebacker position. A lot of these guys in college, they were safeties. They moved them up to outside linebacker to combat the spread offenses, and now we're seeing it in the NFL, those same guys using their speed to make plays in the backfield, similar to that one. And the Vikings with an extra defender in the secondary on third. Playing coverage here. Out 
operating out of the gun. Flacco. Talent on the dump off. And certainly some style points there on the spin. Not a whole lot thereafter, but still a pretty good game. Call it a pickup of seven, and that'll bring up fourth down. A short game that doesn't get them the first down brings up a fourth down situation. Really nice job defensively. They knew where the sticks were. They got the stop before it. Here's Sam Cook now as he'll kick it away for the second time. one-yard punt that time and possession will switch hands first and ten now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field and this is their third drive maybe the focus right now not so much on points but getting their first first down and when you start off a game you don't even think that's an issue do you but you go a drive a second drive no first down that becomes an issue now you got to think about okay what type of play calling do I have to do to get us in a spot to pick that first one up First down throw, Keenum into heavy traffic, and it's intercepted. Picked off by the linebacker, C.J. Mosley. And they have the football that will set up shop at the 33-yard line. Well, this is a defense that can confuse even the best of quarterbacks with their zone schemes. And here you've got a linebacker that's going to stay at home and just sit down in that zone. And this one basically comes right to him. The Ravens' offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And a great spot to start this drive from here. Play action. Flacco. And Watson has it right side. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. A big one there for the Ravens. It goes for 18. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. Counting down toward the midway point in quarter one. This is West. And they go the wrong way here. Knocked back to the 20. So a loss of five, and it'll be second down. So the myth has been shattered. Every cornerback in the league is not just a cover corner. Some of them will stick their nose in there and make plays exactly as we just saw there. A big loss suffered by the offense after that nice tackle. this one down to about the 17. Three yards on the gain. They're going to need to do better on this next play. It'll be third and 12. Some of the most unselfish players on any football team, defensive tackles, because we ask them to just eat up blocks and allow other people to make tackles. But when he can make a play himself, as we just saw there, that's a big day. Fake to Allen. Here's Flacco. 
And he's got his tight end, Watson. Touchdown, Baltimore. Benjamin Watson from 17 yards out. And the Ravens have taken the early lead. And he is a reliable target. They like to get him involved. They got him involved there for the score. And they should. He's a very good player. Remember, they can use him in certain positions, so many different spots, and he usually comes through for them. Justin Tucker for the extra point. And the Ravens lead at 7-0. Just a four-play drive that time. And it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Tucker now out to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27-yard line. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback <laughs> some confidence. See what happens. on the last drive. He's got it complete to Stephon Diggs. 14 yards that time for number 14. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. And the offense lining up first and 10. Here's Keenum. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And they'll get him to the ground, but he got all the way down to the 30-yard line. Give him 30 yards there. And the game just keeps evolving. Big guys running those corner routes, so difficult to cover. comes to the line now first and ten Keenum and he's brought down but not before reaching the eight yard line a good pick up there a 22 this offense can certainly move quickly when they want to. Three plays, three pass completions. In the blink of an eye, they've got a first and goal. Almost felt like a lightning bolt hit in this game, didn't it? For them to get downfield that quickly. And now first and goal, expect them to tackle right here on this play. Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit them, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. They'll try to run it in with Murray. And he is swallowed up right at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play that time, and it sets up second and goal. 
And as a defensive end, getting off the ball quickly, swarming to the football, making a tackle, that's what we saw right there. Yeah, and that's what their job is. And really, a lot of the time, they have to throttle back a little bit in the run game because you know those defensive ends. They're like in a sprinter stance. They're just headed straight for the quarterback. That was good recognition on that play to hold them to no gain. Second and goal as the offense looks to try to punch it in. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. They'll lose a yard, and it brings up third. Partner, I know we're in a goal-to-go situation, but my goodness, think about running the ball here, not even a thought, yeah, is it? defensively, they're in a prime spot. And I think the defensive guys are probably expressing themselves to them as well. I wouldn't run it here, guys. You might want to try throwing it. Now from back at the nine after that last play, this is third and goal. Keenum now to throw. Caught on the slant. And he's able to get it down to the two-yard line. That pass play good for seven, but it still brings up a fourth and goal. Well, this is how you shape the thoughts of that interception on the last drive. You come out and start this one four for four. And watching him throw it around with that type of confidence reminds me of a guy I played with way back when who told me, I don't care if I throw ten interceptions in a row. I'm going to stay confident, keep flinging it. I just figured there's something wrong with the football. And Forbath will put this one through. And they are on the board, but still trailing. It's 7-3. Well, it's not unusual to know that Kai Forbath has kicked for multiple NFL teams, right? Washington, New Orleans. They took over the Vikings job when Blair Walsh ended his tenure there when he was struggling. How about his start with the Vikings, though? Made 15 straight. Yeah, he took over in week 10, and you're right, hit every field goal the rest of the season. Forbath now to kick it away after the made field goal. The return man, Chris Moore. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. Here comes the Raven offense now, ready for another possession. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. First down, Flacco. Blitz coming and down he goes. Eric Kendricks coming hard on the blitz. He dumps him for a loss of eight. Well, that play was the very definition of fast, quick, and in a hurry. Suddenly, he was there. In a blink of an eye, that happened fast and a big sack. forward for about four up to the 23. Snap, we hit all zeros as time has run out on the first quarter of play. 7-3 the score. We're back to Minneapolis in just a moment.
The NFL on EA Sports is presented by Snickers. You're not you when you're hungry. Snickers satisfies. Second quarter now. Brandon God and Charles Davis with you. It's the Ravens who have the football. They do, however, have a tough third and long coming up. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Take this one down to the 36. A gain of three, second down. Well, they didn't get a whole lot out of that one, but I think you've got to continue to try and run and try and keep the defense honest. You mean, or also just sit back, dare you to throw it on every down? Yeah, you get your quarterback hit a lot that way, too. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Nothing doing. Barely able to muster a yard to hit the 35. Well, that call makes sense because they've been throwing it well on this drive, and once again, they show passing formation, showing the shotgun. Then they ran out of it. That's a nice play by them defensively, though, to hold it to a short game. The Ravens on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This will be third and six. Flacco from the gun. And this is going to be incomplete. So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. And I don't think this has the carry. It does not. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Everything looked good. Good snap, good hold. Sometimes, though, the ball just doesn't want to go where you want it. And this one winds up no good. And now we move our focus to Stephon Diggs. He's been good so far to this point in the second quarter. Need to get him even more involved, maybe? I would agree with that. Definitely. Uh, yeah, it's not even a question for me. The way he's playing, he's doing a nice job. Increase things. More touches, more opportunities. Maybe that can reverse things on the scoreboard for them. We'll try to ratchet things up then maybe here in the second quarter. Good field position to start the drive after the missed field goal. Here's first down from the 42. Shotgun snap for Keenum. Out to the flat. That's complete to his running back. They pick up 12 on the play there, and they move the chains. Keenum. And 
he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he'll go out of bounds after taking it a little further down inside the 40. It's a gain of nine yards. And it'll be second and about a yard. And the big guy catches the ball out of the backfield. And oftentimes, that's quite a surprise to the guys playing defense. Because not ordinarily thought as a pass catcher, it often works when they decide to dial it up. That was second down run for Murray. And this time, not quite to the 30. It'll be down at the 31-yard line. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. You and I both know that you don't really, truly replace Adrian Peterson. But Latavius Murray's a really good back. Similar running styles, too. Won't wear the same number, we know that. But when you see him run, you might see a little bit of that in him. Upright with some power. the Georgia Southern man. This is Jarek McKinnon. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They've got to feel pretty good about that one. They run once more with McKinnon. And they take him down, losing yardage back at the 27. And they'll lose a yard that time, and that's going to lead to a third down. Partner, you mind if I take off this headset and put on a coaching headset? You want to get this running game going? I want to get this running game going. I'm going down there and saying, gentlemen, we have got to run the football. We've got to get it going right now. Yeah, to this point in the second quarter, it has been a struggle. The Vikings on third down. 0 for 3 to this point. They could use a conversion. This will be third and six. Green, 39. Green, 39. Now Keenum. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That's a first down if he holds on, but you saw the contact. Able to jar it free from him and force a fourth down. Great play defensively there, as you said, just to knock it free, because if he had caught that, pass the sticks, first down. So out comes the field goal team now for the second time here today. He hit his first one, this from 44 yards out now. It doesn't even get there. Well short, and this score will stay right where it is. So it's an empty possession, and as a kicker, not the way you want to start your day's work. And now each team's missed a field goal here so far, Brandon, so apparently neither guy is immune. Now Joe Flacco in the offense heading back out onto the field. He's played a pretty clean first half, a touchdown, no interceptions. Frankly, that's what they expect out of it. They want to see the ball thrown and thrown well, and he's able to do that and put it in the end zone. They'd love to see more of that before this game finishes. But right now, he's got his team in a good spot. A good spot, maybe looking for touchdown pass number two here in the second quarter. First and 10 here for Flacco. Oh, that was dangerous. Threw it into coverage, almost picked. But instead, they'll keep it on second down. Well, let's go league-wide for a second, Charles. Kansas City losing to Pittsburgh, so no more undefeated teams remaining in the NFL. The 72 Dolphins could celebrate once again. I wonder if they got caught off guard a little bit that it happened this early. Because some years, they almost go to the wire, don't they? In this case... Heck, we're not even at the halfway mark, and the celebration has already begun for that team. I guess the closest was the Patriots when they lost to the Giants, but yeah, this year, no such injury. Incomplete on first down, now Flacco on second. Quick hitter here, it's complete. And he'll be brought down right around the 37. Only three yards on the catch, it's third down. And that's one of his advantages of a passer, is it not? With his height, 
setting back there in the pocket, firing it over the middle. He can really see everything clearly. It is, and I know that other quarterbacks get it done different ways, all right? You don't have to be his height to make a great play, but what he does is he takes away having to make those slide steps in the pocket to find angles to throw the ball through. He just throws right over the top of it because he can see everything, and sometimes that saves time and gets the ball to a receiver quicker. Third down, Flacco needs a decent chunk of yardage. And that's complete. It's Watson. It goes as a gain of eight and it moves the chains. That throw has to be a quarterback's dream, doesn't it? Big tight end, curling in the middle of the field, so it's great sight lines for him. And when they show their numbers back to the quarterback, when they sit down right there, that should be pitch and catch. First and ten, and Flacco looking to throw. Over the middle, it's complete. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Now that's staying ahead of the chains. Really good pick up on first down, hitting the tight end there. Now it brings up a second and manageable. Just found a hole in that zone. They go pass again with Flacco. Now a hit, and Flacco drops the football. It's loose. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense. They're usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from it. In this case, though, a teammate is able to come up with the ball. The Ravens on third down. They've hit at 50%, three of six to this point. This is third and 11. Flacco. He's going to look deep for Perriman. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. And you just know when that play call came in, their eyes lit up because anytime you get a chance to take a big shot downfield, that's a lot of fun, and they missed an opportunity. Here's Sam Cook now as he's on to punt for Baltimore. He's been a busy man here in this first half as he gets it away. And a bit of a mistake there. This is well into the end zone for a touchback. Latavius Murray getting set to go again. And for him, it's been pretty limited involvement. Down on the scoreboard, maybe time to turn to this guy. And you know me well. Winning games to me means starting with the running game and continuing to press the running game. Maybe you go away from him a little bit now, but the bottom line is he hasn't touched it enough to make a difference. Well, they haven't established that running game yet. The question is, will they? Now a play fake here on first down. And complete right side to tight end Rudolph. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Give him 12 yards on that one. It earns him a fresh shot of downs. Nice play call. A little bit of play action right there. If you can get those linebackers to freeze for just a split second, that's usually all the room you need in order to get it to your tight end.
Throwing on first down is Keenum. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Terrell Suggs in there to pick up his second sack now of the afternoon. There's a little bit of defense right there. Nickel set, five defensive backs. They just snuffed out every route that was going. Quarterback never got rid of the football. Second down, here's Keenum. And the hit jarred it loose. It's incomplete. And Charles got to like what this defense has been able to do these last couple of plays. Yeah, they get the sack on first down, then they force the incomplete pass. Now they're just a play away from getting the football right back, but it's a big play. They've got to hold up. The Vikings on third down, not good. 0 for 4 thus far. This will be third and 15. Play action. Now it's Keenum. Let's it fly for Treadwell. And incomplete. He can't hang on. Would have been a nice catch. Instead, it brings up a fourth down. One thing I know from experience is that when the deep ball is thrown and you're the defender, you've got to fight that little bit of panic that emerges. You've got to play the ball really well. It's a 50-50 jump ball play. And guess what? They took a shot. How are you going to win it? And in this case, they managed to get it done. Here's Ryan Quigley now as he's on to punt for Minnesota. And not what he was hoping for there as this will hit in the end zone for a touchback. It's the turn now of Jeremy Macklin and company again on offense here. Second quarter, a guy like him, no catches, so that's the surprising part, but they're winning, so maybe they've been able to do some other things effectively, I guess. And they found other ways, haven't they? Because the receivers would tell you, offense needs to run through us, but they're managing to get it done in this ball game without having to actually do that. I wouldn't expect them to stay silent for the rest of the game. Though. Yeah, yeah you got to think that his first catch is coming at some point. They look to throw on first and ten with Flacco. Wide open receiver complete. And he's brought down after a good gain. And a nice gain of 21 yards. Well, clearly one of his advantages as a passer is his height, sit back in the pocket, fired over the middle. That makes things tougher defensively, doesn't it? It really does because your goal is to move the quarterback off his initial spot when he gets his drop back completed. But when you have that type of height, he can stay in there if he's willing to take the hits and just fire over the top, which saves him time and actually completes a play a little bit quicker than it normally does for a quarterback that has to slide and find open space to throw. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Oh, eluding the tackle. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Not a run that you're going to write home about, but still a good first down run. That's what an offense calls staying on schedule. Three to four yards on first down, you're set up very well for the rest of the drive. Second down, Flacco now. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. The veteran Jeremy Macklin was the intended target, and it's third down. The Ravens on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This will be third and six. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. That is caught, it's Perriman. 20, 10, and all the way in for the Ravens touchdown. 
Brashad Perriman, 55 yards. And the Ravens will extend their lead. As a former DB, you might not like to see that, but from a wide receiver's perspective, those are the plays they dream of. Correct on both counts, all right? Because once he took off, I mean, let's face it, that should have been done in big sky country. There aren't any speed limits out there. And off he went. Glad I wasn't the one trying to chase him. Tucker now for the extra point. And this one's right through to make it a 14-3 ball game. A four-play drive spanning 80 yards, and it's capped off by the Baltimore score. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. Here's Stephon Diggs as he and the rest of the offense get ready to go again. He's probably someone they want to get more involved at this point. Second quarter down to the scoreboard, you know that he can be a threat. And because he's such a threat, as well as so productive. I'm with you on this. They've got to get him the ball more, give him more opportunities for them to have a chance to erase that lead. Certainly they'll be looking to get him even more in the mix this go around. All right, here we go. Green, 39. Here's Murray now as they run it to start the drive. Try to find a lane, but instead he'll get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. No gain on that run, and while this team is down, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination. Maybe you just have to think about different style of running in order to get this guy going. Two minutes to play here in the first half. More from Minneapolis after this. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Larry Ridley will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. Second down, here's Keenum going with a screen for Murray. And he gets this one just shy of the 40 to mark him down at the 39. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. On first and 10, Keenum lets it fly for Treadwell. So they took a shot on first down but couldn't connect. This secondary has been roasted in this first half, and they get a measure of revenge there. Nice play on the deep ball. Yeah, they're going to need a few more plays like that in order to get their confidence fully back, but that's one step in the proper direction. So incomplete on first. Let's see what second down has in store. Working from the gun, Keenum. And Rudolph has it left side. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. Again, Keenum. And he'll be out of bounds, able to take it down to the 40. 18 yards there and a first down. 
And now with that completion, he's north of 200 yards here in the first half. And he's going to break our statistician, Marvin, isn't he? <laughs> Marvin right now is just tallying it up. Hope his hand doesn't hurt too much doing this or keeps hitting the calculator. But my goodness, what a start he is off to. By the end of this game, he could have monster numbers. He just wants to continue to be accurate. So the offense has it first and 10. Again is Keenum. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. Stephon Diggs, his intended receiver. And now it's second down. And here comes play number six on this drive. to the air on second down. It's Keenum. And incomplete there. A nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they didn't completions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. Now we've got movement up front, and I think this is going to be on Minnesota. All start offense. They expect this from the visiting team when playing indoors, but not the home team. They're supposed to get all the advantages, right? The home crowd's supposed to help them. They forgot where they were, perhaps. The Vikings on third down. They've had their troubles. Just one for six. This will be third and 15. Here we go now. They'll run it now out of the gun. And they will stop him after a fairly minimal pickup. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down. Here's Ryan Quigley now. He's been one of their few bright spots so far. And they won't risk defending a return here. That one's out of bounds, and it'll be spotted. Spotted at the 14-yard line. Joe Flacco and company heading back out onto the field. And he's been good. Two first-half touchdown passes, no interceptions so far. Does a lot for your confidence. Does a great deal for your team. Gives them a lead, and they're feeling really good about how they're playing. I think he expects to throw at least another one. I was going to say, now he wants the first half hat trick, doesn't he? Oh, without a doubt. Go ahead and fling him on the field, folks. He wants that type of celebration. They start on the ground with West. <laughs> And he'll be taken down at the 18. Yeah, give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. But that kind of run on first down, that's a winning type of a run. That just sets things up for them moving forward as they begin the drive. And they line up now for what will likely be the last play of the first half. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Ravens out in front as we'll send you down to Orlando as we check in with Larry Ridley and our EA Sports Halftime Report. Larry? All right, Brandon, we'll see if I can get through this without being skipped as we welcome you to our EA Sports Halftime Report. The Vikings haven't played their best football and trailed because of it. The Ravens will want to come out after the half and really put the pressure on from the start. All right, let's get it going. Here's the first half highlights. First and 10, Suggs will get to the QB for the sack. This ends up as a loss of seven. After the INT, offense comes out now. Flacco's going to complete the pass, and it's caught for the touchdown. That takes the lead up to seven. Now first and 10, Kendrick's going to take down the QB here. This will go for a loss of eight. Now 
until late in the first half. Flacco able to get this one in the hands of the speedster, Brashad Perryman. And nobody can stop him on this long touchdown. Ravens go up by 11. Okay, Larry, thank you. And we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. So both teams have their marching orders and we'll get going again here in quarter number three. This fielded a few yards into the end zone and he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee and they'll start at the 25. Out come the Ravens now. They'll go on offense first here in this third quarter. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on Here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. They begin here with a run by West. And his rough afternoon continues. He's going nowhere again. No gain on the play there. Second down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play holding them to no gain. They fake the handoff. Now Flacco to pass. Now a hit, and Flacco drops the football. It's loose. skill whatever the case is they're feeling good about just keeping the football there yeah the biggest thing that they're calling it now our ball <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill but the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground whether you get it or your teammate gets it just as long as you retain possession that's all you're looking for The Ravens on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. This will be third and forever. Flacco from the gun. They'll wind up losing 11 on the play. And that's going to make it fourth down. Sam Cook now. He's been terrific so far. And he's able to get it out of there. And this is a pretty good kick. Cheryl's to return it. And that's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And this offense will take over right at the midfield stripe with a first and ten. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> from all the work he's getting. All right, here we go. 
They go play action here on first down. Toward the sideline, and look at that catch. Dragging the toes, and that's going to be a first down. Well done. 15 yards through the air and a first down. He's been a busy man here in this one, and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds. And with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game, wouldn't you keep him busy as well? I would. Of course. you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him. He keeps making plays. Now a play fake, and it's Keenum. And no escaping this time as he'll go down. They got him for a sack. Carl Davis in there to sack him for a loss of six. Sometimes I watch games and wonder why they use play fakes on certain passing situations because it's not going to fool anyone. I don't know if that was the case here, but the end result was the same. No one fooled. The quarterback was hit. Some good tackling there as he stopped up at about the 41. Only two yards on the pickup there, and now they're looking at a long third down. The Vikings on third down. It's been a problem. Just one for seven thus far. This is third and 14. All right, here we go. Boom, landed. Now it's Keenum. Screenplay, McKinnon. And he'll be brought down at the 27-yard line. It'll be a pickup of 14, but they're still a little bit short as it brings up fourth. They dialed up the screen pass on third down, and for a second, it looked like it was all going to come together, and they had a chance to pick up a first down, but the defense got there and finished it off. On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. From the right hash, this from 44 yards out. And Forbath will put this one through. And a second field goal here cuts their deficit to 14 to 6 now. A decent drive there to start the third quarter. They only salvage three out of it, but they do inch a bit closer. Yeah, still lots of time to go in this one. Take the points, move on, and let your defense try to get the ball back. now to kick it away after the main field goal. This will be taken in at the one. And nice work on the return as they'll start their drive just past the 30-yard line. And now Baltimore gets set to take the field. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well. Go to so something well, else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Play action, Flacco. And down he goes. Linval Joseph forcing his way through there to drop him for a loss of a good 10 yards. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line flat out cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. On 
second down. Flacco to throw. And he hits his target. Left side, Watson. And they'll get it all the way out near midfield to the 45. That one goes for 24 yards. his way forward here for a good little game. It's a six-yard pickup, and it gets him to second and four. That play wasn't quite as big as the play that preceded it, but still, got to like the way they're moving the football, partner. Absolutely. Pretty good room to run on that last play. Yeah, they didn't get a first down, but still, you'll take runs like that each and every time, won't you? Flacco here on second down. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Jeremy Macklin, the intended receiver. And yeah, that'll make it third down. Well, the numbers have been good in the passing game and certainly a big reason why they have the lead. But now here, third quarter, maybe go to the run game a little more? Yeah, perhaps. I mean, after that incompletion, a little credit to the defense for shutting them down on that play. Maybe you try and run the football a little bit more in this spot. But they have to feel good about how they've been throwing it overall. Third down, Flacco from the gun. And he's got a man open, that's Allen. And that little deke, the juke move that we saw, able to give him the first down yardage before he's brought down. The Raven passing game getting in sync, another first down. Good route, good pickup for first down yardage, and that is a tough one to cover, the angle route, because a running back getting out of the backfield, if you're trying to cover that, especially if you're in the linebacker spot and you're seeing this play develop, he heads out towards the flat first, and that often gets you to overcommit running in that direction. Then he cuts back up inside you into the middle of the field. That's what we just saw there for a nice pickup. First and 10 here for Flacco. And he's got the hook up for the first time with a veteran, Jeremy Macklin. And brought down, but not before they're inside the 25. 11 more on that one, and another first down. In recent years, the slot receivers really gained stature in the NFL because they could do so many things. Yes, they can line up wide like your normal wide receiver, but to have that kind of courage and toughness to run routes in the middle of the field and become dependable targets for their quarterbacks and move the sticks, those guys are worth their weight in gold. tracks two yards on the pickup there it'll be second and eight see if they stay on the ground for second down the gun. Flacco finds his man. Watson over the middle. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Ravens touchdown. Benjamin Watson. His second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Ravens will add on to their lead. Always important to get the first score of the second half. Now you start to pull away a little bit and get some breathing room going. And now we find out about the fortitude of the group that's behind because they were counting on getting into the game a little bit more, right? Maybe they get the first score. That doesn't happen. It looks almost insurmountable, but it's not. Let's see how hard they play the rest of the game. It's up and good, and that'll make the score 21-6. to 6. 
So an eight-play drive covering 80 yards. And it's capped off with a Ravens touchdown. Here's Tucker now out to kick this one away. This will be taken to the back of the end zone. And no thought to bring this one out. He'll just go down to a knee, and they'll take over at the 25. And now out comes Minnesota. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. First down. He's going to launch this thing way downfield. And it's knocked away and incomplete. He was looking for Jarius right that time. And that'll bring up second down. Well, I guess we just discovered that someone is certainly not going to sit back and just take it in this game, huh? No, they were trying to get that touchdown back in one shot. One shot, trying to help out his defense and let the other team know they were coming after him. Second down now after the incompletion. Let's go. Three, nine, From the gun, it's Keenum. And he comes back with one complete. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 34 here. And they'll get nine there as that sets him up better for third down. The Vikings on third down. Just one conversion in eight tries. Not good. They're up against a third and one situation. Now Keenum. Over the middle complete. That's Morgan. And he's got the first down as he's up to the 45-yard line. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. As far as tight ends go, this guy's not a speed burner. He's much more of an inline blocking type of a tight end. But how about this last play? Made a nice catch and picked up a first down. That's what impresses me about him. When he's called upon, usually gets it done. Fresh set of downs here. All right, here we go. Three. A run. It's Murray. And he's got it across midfield and down to about the 47-yard line. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And, you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. Second down following the run. They go with Murray again. No dice this go around. He's hit behind the line and taken down. It's a loss of two. Now third down. All right, Brandon, you know me as well as anyone. You know I don't usually advocate abandoning things during a game, but here we are in the second half. I think it's time to change things up. Let the running game go a little bit. Let's get to the passing game, and if you still want to get in the hands of the runner, maybe you swing it to him, throw it to him a little bit. Try it that way. The Vikings on third down. Not so hot. Two for nine to this point. This is third and four. Set, three, 19. They'll run it now out of the gun. 
And he's going to have a first down as he's brought down at the 44-yard line. But just four yards on the pickup, but that's good enough to extend the drive. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. So the run gets them the first, and now they operate with a fresh set of downs. Now contact up front as penalty markers come in. Who is this against? Encroachment on defense. Now the movement there coming from the middle of the line. And you understand he wants to get off the ball quickly, but the ball's right in front of him. He has to watch it move first. The defense helps the offense out there. Now five yards to go on first down. All right, here we go. Single, 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 single. And now they'll throw with Keenum. Open here, Adam Thielen. And he's going to get this inside the 30. A good gain of 14 there, and it moves the chains. walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Hurry up, here we go. Hurry up. On first down, Murray. And he'll lose yardage here, going down back at the 28. It's a loss of two there, bringing up second down. Wasn't that long ago that the NFL guys really didn't adopt much from the college game. But one thing that has crept in there is spreading things out, opening things up, not even just in tempo, but maybe getting better line splits and spreading the field. I think that would be a great strategy right now to try and open things up in the run game. scarce here. He's going to be stopped in his tracks at the line of scrimmage. Maybe a gain of a yard that time, but yeah, from the spot, actually no gain. So third and long. No gain on that run, and while the team is down, there's still time to come back and win the football game. If I'm the offensive coordinator, though, I've got to think about moving at a faster pace and maybe opening things up a little bit and throwing it a little bit more. So they'll get a little extra time to come up with his third down play as we play three quarters. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Back now at beautiful new U.S. Bank Stadium. It's the Vikings in possession of the football, but they need some points. They're trailing here to start the fourth. The Vikings on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This is third down and 12. Out of the gun, Keenum. Nowhere to turn here, and he's going to go down. Back at about the 37-yard line. The amount of sacks that they've absorbed in this game is absolutely extraordinary. Let's just face it. This offensive line, flat out, cannot handle this pass rush. It's been demonstrated time and time again. Oh, 
On now is Kai Forbath to try the field goal. From the left hash, this will be a 52-yard attempt. And this one is no good. He missed it. And this score will stay right where it is. So another long try for three and another kick that comes up lacking. Yeah, this isn't going to do any wonders for his field goal percentage, but you have to figure as a head coach that when you send a guy out there to try and kick from that distance, it's a 50-50 proposition at best. And the Ravens taking the field. They had to go a long way on their last drive to score the touchdown. This time, they get at least a little bit more of a cushion with field position. I have to think that with this field position, after what they did on the last drive, they might want to take a shot right now and try and cut down the length of the drive. fake here on first down oh incomplete a turnover would have really helped there almost intercepted instead it's just second down I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there you've got a lead you've got to protect it and he's taking chances putting it out there in a little bit of jeopardy especially in a spot like this fourth quarter as you said trying to cling to that advantage yeah that one probably should have been picked huh Second and ten. Flacco once more. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Completion was given up, but that's why you play zone defense, so that you can have people around the ball when it's caught, and you don't give up much run after the catch. The Ravens on third down. They've hit on half of them, five for ten. This time they face a third and two. Operating out of the gun, Flacco. Got a man, it's complete, Williams. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. And that pickup of a first down, that's going to leave a mark because they really needed to stop them there, didn't they? Oh, so frustrating. Defensively, you're a play away from getting that football back here down late. Tough. Now they've got to find a way to create a turnover or take away. Otherwise, this one will probably get away from them. as they run the counter play. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario tell you what they're looking for and make sure that they're still attacking yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock and he is going to be knocked flat on his back oh a big hit 10 yards there good enough for a raven first down he's played a great game it continues right there even with this lead confident to throw the pass and have the reception made there's no doubt who the leader of their team is is there there's no doubt who they want to ride all the way to the finish because strategy would tell you run the football run the clock down instead they're letting him throw it because they feel that confident in what he's getting done on first down flacco and it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. So he can't hang on. And as I watch that unfold, I remembered an expression that I've heard, maybe from you, I don't know. But you're going to get hit anyways. Might as well hold on to the ball. Well, you know a coach said that, right? Yeah. Not an actual player. Not a chance at all. Way easier said than done. Flacco to throw again on second down. Got a man over the middle, it's Williams. And taking it to the 15-yard line before he's brought down. The Raven passing game getting in sync, another first down. I'd have to say they're feeling like they are in rhythm right now. 
things are in sync, aren't they? Team's winning, got a nice little margin on the scoreboard, completing some passes, and they just completed another one for a first down there to the tight end. And the defense with their backs against the wall a little bit here as the offense is in the red zone. And to give this time to the tailback. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. So statistically, both of these offenses having a rough time getting a running game going. But boy, what a nice play there defensively. Tackling him behind the line, but you're right. You look at the numbers. Neither side looks on track in the ground game. And the eighth play on this drive coming up. Second down, Flacco now. Looking left side, he's got it complete. That catch good for only a yard, and it'll be third down. Can you do any more work or make it more dramatic for not much gain than what we just saw there? Did you see how his toes got down? Tip-tap, tip-tap, got him down. But what did he get out of it? He sold the sizzle. He just had no stake. <laughs> I mean, was it one yard? Yeah, you, plays like that, you at least expect a first down there, just one yard. They'll run it here. This is Buck Allen. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be fourth down. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given a little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. This to make it a three-score game late. And Tucker's kick right there. It's good. And that will make this now an 18-point ball game. And you figure with that, this game's pretty well out of reach. It would take a heck of a comeback at this point, being three scores down. I think that's too much to ask with time winding down here in the fourth. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. That's fielded in the end zone. And he won't return this one. He'll go down to a knee, and they'll start at the 25. And now out comes Minnesota. Last time out, they had that long 50-plus yard field goal that they missed. And I'm sure on their sideline, they're thinking to themselves, okay, do we still want to try one if we're in that position again? And I would dare say that the answer would be yes. They're going to have a lot of confidence in their kicker. But just to be on the safe side, I'm sure they told their offensive guys, can we get a little bit closer yeah, this time? Yeah, a little time? closer. Yeah, well, you know, I'd rather get in the end zone first and foremost. But if all else fails, less of a field goal attempt for him. They begin the drive with a run by Murray. And he'll fight forward to about the 27-yard line. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. And the trend continues here in the fourth like it was in the first, second, and third. He's had nowhere to run. And you're probably thinking to yourself, why do they keep feeding him the football? Well, they trust him first and foremost. They do believe that over time he might actually pop one of these runs. But bottom line is he takes care of the ball well for them, so they keep handing it to him. Keenum to throw on second down. He'll find Thielen work in the middle. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Give him 10 yards on that one, and that'll earn him a fresh set of downs. Hey, we talked about Adam Thielen a little bit last year, didn't we? Possession receiver, makes some tough catches, gets it done, and he's a homeboy. <laughs> We're up very close to the Twin Cities. And show him those possession receiver skills right there to pick up the first.
So here we go, first and ten now. A shotgun snap for Keenum. Over the middle here to Rudolph. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. A gain of six there on first. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made it a nice, easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Second down now after the pass completion. His carry of the game now, Murray. And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Personal foul, face mask, defense. So that flag will cost him 15. And it doesn't matter anymore how you get the face mask. Any part of it is going to be 15 yards. and 10, Keenum. Looking deep downfield. This is caught inside the 15. And he gets this one all the way down inside the 15. A very solid gain of 27. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. And the next snap coming inside the red zone here. Now we've got movement up front, and I think this is going to be on Minnesota. False start, offense. So that'll back him up five. McKinnon. And he's able to work it here to the eight-yard line. 11 yards on the pickup, and that'll bring up second down. That was a good, strong run there. While one pick up a first down, it was definitely something needed by that offense. A positive run. They got a good push by their guys up front. Maybe something they can build on as this game continues. Throw on second down is Keenum. Screen play, McKinnon. Hammering for the goal line. He loses the football. But fortunately, he's able to recover his own fumble, and that could have been trouble. All I can say about this play is that someone's living right. I mean, he's trying to gain yardage, trying to get upfield. Ball comes free. What's that panic that we've talked about oftentimes that you feel when you yeah, lose the ball? You can sense it. Oh, you can sense it. And somehow he got to it and was able to recover it for his squad. The Vikings on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. Here it's third and two. Shotgun snap for Keenum. His pass caught at the four. And he will have the first down before he's brought down at the three. 
They only got two, but that was enough as they'll convert to make it first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. And now whistles and a flag, and I think we got a jump here. Encroachment defense. A free five yards as the defense jumps. I know it's an anticipation game for them, but it's also a reaction game, and they reacted poorly on that one. Offense walks to the line for play number seven of the drive. Now let's go. Blue lining. Blue lining. Now we've got movement up front, and I think this is going to be on Minnesota. Ball start. Offense. And that'll be accepted, of course, and that moves him back five. First down and goal to go from the seventh. Following the penalty, it's Murray. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Latavius Murray taking it in from seven yards away. And the Vikings are able to close the gap just a bit. And there you go. Nothing really too complex. Block, keep to your assignments, let them run it in. They did it. Fundamental football. Good blocking, beats good tackling on that play. End result, touchdown. Kai Forbath on for the extra point. And it is good. That cuts the lead now to 11 24 13 hour score. So that drive in total eight plays. And it culminates with a Latavius Murray touchdown run. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And this one recovered by the hands team for the Ravens. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% <laughs> of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. Really nice starting field position here for the offensive unit. And he'll give it here to his running back. Looking for a seam, but finding none. He'll get back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage. Use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And he'll be stopped up quickly here at the 38. One yard, the official pickup there, so it's going to set up 
third and nine. And that's why you see a lot of teams that like to play 4-3 defense, especially against teams that run the ball really well, because you count on your defensive front, the tackles and the ends, to eat up the blocking in the offensive line and keep that guy in the middle clean so he can roam to the football and make a tackle. In this case, he introduced himself and said, hello, my name is Mike. So it's Raven football here as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. Well, they need to get to the 29 if they want to pick up a first here on third down. Flacco gives to Allen, and he is going to feel that one knocked down hard. And now right out of the two-minute break, we'll get a timeout used defensively with a minute 56 to go. The defense, they got a little bit of a breather. Now they're back and set as we resume play. So on fourth down, Flacco off to the sidelines. He gives way to Justin Tucker. This will be kicked from the 42. It's a 52-yard attempt. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through. And that will get the lead up to 14. So they settle for just the three there. But clearly, anything helps when you're trying to salt one away here in the fourth. Without a doubt, I think a touchdown would have been the final nail. But three does give him some breathing room and lets him build up a little cushion. Tucker now following the made field goal, set to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And all that work, but he stopped where he ultimately would have been, and he's simply taken a knee, and that's the 25-yard line. And out now come the Vikings, and they're going to need another score. Got one last time, but still down here. When you're playing catch-up, Every possession becomes crucial, doesn't it? It's vital. Get back out on the field, punch in the end zone again. They know it's not easy, but what they do have going for them, they did score the last time. They think they've got a good formula working. And what about the defense? Well, now you're just saying to yourself, okay, we gave up a score last time. What adjustments do we need to make to slow them down now and get the ball back for our own offense? Is it more pressure? Is it more zone? What do they have to do? They're trying to figure that out themselves. We'll see if they can figure that out right here. Keenum now on first down. It's complete to Laquan Treadwell. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. On second down, here's Keenum. Caught on the right side by Treadwell. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. 17 yards on the pick up there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. And he'll find Thielen on the right side. A really good pickup at 28 yards. First down now, but that clock rolling. On first down, it's Keenum. And he's got it. And he's brought down after a good game. A good pickup there at 22. First down now, but that clock rolling. Now we've got movement up front. And I think this is going to be on Minnesota. Offense. And that'll set them back five. Yeah. 
Two big plays in succession. Not sure this D knows what hit him, but now they got to get ready. It's first and goal. Pressure too much. Down he goes. Tony Jefferson in there to take him down, and the clock will roll. On second down, here's Keenum. They'll get nothing out of that one, and it's going to lead to a third down. They'll get to the line here, but remember, it's also third down. From the gun, here's Keenum. And it's intercepted at the goal line. Picked off here by Jimmy Smith. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Some things you just accept as fact in the NFL. And one that is true, the Baltimore Ravens are going to attack you on defense and create turnovers and takeaways. Their secondary had 18 interceptions in 2016. That was tied for the most in the league. And tough starting field position here. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he will forge his way forward only up to the two-yard line. And with inside of 10 seconds, eight to be precise, we get whistles and a timeout on the field. I'm ready now for second and nine. Going to give this time to the tailback. Able to evade the tackle, but then quickly brought down just outside the five. And we will get a timeout with two ticks left. So the timeout over and all 11 men back out onto the field for the defense. To Anigo's Flacco, and that should be it. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it, and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. 
from Minneapolis. So long, everybody.